Oh, wait, Mikhail, right before we get started, who's this David Morrison that uh, Jennifer Hahn fought? Like, if you look him up on Box Rec, it's a man, 3 and 24, and he fought nothing but women. But well, I don't know if you're familiar. Yeah, I know, it's something you got to look into, but. Oh, my God, I got to show Coach out, too. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't come across that. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll anyways, but um, okay. I'll stop, stop wasting your time. Uh, <laughs> Fighthype.com here with the undefeated WBO IBF super featherweight champion of the world, really making a homecoming of sorts, a title defense in Costa Mesa, California, April 9th, live on ESPN. Michaela, what's up, man? What, what would, what would you know, grown Michaela, unified champion, what, what do you think uh, uh, young Michaela, teenager Michaela would say if you told her, yeah, you're going to be unified champion on ESPN, headlining, you know, defending, uh, yeah. I would have believed it because I, I always believed it. Now, I didn't necessarily envision it exactly the way it is because I couldn't possibly. I mean, there was there was no – promoters weren't signing women. You know, it's – I didn't envision it. I didn't even know necessarily I was going to turn pro. You know, I thought maybe I would do multiple Olympics. But things just sort of unfolded as I started training because – I knew, I didn't know how, but I knew somehow I was going to create a market for women's boxing. I knew somehow I was going to have a career in this and I was going to be with the best female fighter in the world. And I said that from like the get-go, from like the very beginning, the first month or two I was in the gym, I, I said those things. And I don't know where I came up with that because at the time we weren't allowed to compete in the Olympics. Promoters weren't signing us, but I just knew I had a passion. I knew I had a drive. And I've just always been that type of person. I just make things happen. So um, I'm grateful for where I am. I couldn't ask to be in a better situation right now. I feel like my career has gone perfectly. I've had some great fights. Palma Douche being the cherry on top of the cake where I feel like I really earned my respect. And, um, you know, people really see me as, you know, in the top the top pound for pound list so um that's that's good i've always believed it but it's always good when people finally believe it and see it also so uh yeah i feel like i'm in my prime i'm gonna have a great next couple of years so so need, so young michaela wouldn't have been that surprised basically it just it sounds like you knew you were a star uh deep down i just <sighs> i said this in my last interview but i was like i was i was very uh experience for my age and I was like 13 I was on tour playing in a band around the U.S. like I've just feel like I've lived a lot of lives and I've always been very 100% all in with everything I've ever done and when I'm done I'm done but when I'm when I'm in it like I'm an extremist and so I don't I don't half-ass anything and when I found boxing like I knew that was that was what I wanted to do that was my passion that's what I had found that's the most important thing in the world is finding something you're passionate about. I tell that to everybody. And so I found that in boxing and um, passion drove me. Passion got me here. Just self-belief and, and the love for the love of the sport. Now watching Jennifer Hahn, um, who never lost in her five title fights at featherweight, didn't lose a fight between 2014 and then up until last year against Katie Taylor. She looks a more, more technical than Maya Bahamadouche looked, but is part of even though even if she is technically superior, is part of you gonna be relieved when you get in there and she's just not bum rushing you nonstop for two minutes of every round? Um, no. I mean, you would think that, right? Because I think that a lot of people would have crumbled with someone with that type of pressure, and I think that you always think going into a fight with someone like Hamadouche or style like that is the first thing is like. I don't want to gas out. Like you don't want to gas out because you know the pressure is going to be on you constantly. Um, but I trained for that. I trained to have my foot on the gas the entire 10 rounds up in altitude with Crawford's team um, and worked really hard for that. And so even though this fight going in with Han, it's, it's not about that. It's not going to be about whose engine is, is stronger. Um, it's not that type of fight. It's more a chance for me to show my boxing IQ. Um, because Jennifer Hahn's not that typical of a boxer either. She does a lot of sort of unorthodox things, her movement, and so she can be tricky. Katie Taylor said it herself. She's very defensive and it's tricky to hit. So um, she's just, this is, this is what we do. We break down our opponents. We always have a strategy. We always have a game plan. Every fight is different. And, uh, but I think that's one of my strengths. I'm very versatile and I can 
I, my style will usually beat different styles. Like I can beat many different styles. So this is a chance for me to show my boxing IQ. Hamadou's fight, I got to show my grit, my heart, my my body work, my inside game. And now I'm going to go back to boxing and show people that um, I'm a smart boxer. Yeah, because the last couple fights, these girls are just coming right at you, cr trying to crowd you. We know you're tall. And so and, and so what you've done is kind of beat them at their own game, you know, go, banging away with them. So, but do you feel like, well, you already said it, that we, we're going to see more of that that long jab and, technical stuff on the outside this fight and is that is that important you know to 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 have all those areas for uh katie taylor and amanda serrano winner down the line or alicia Baumgartner? yeah it's always been very important to coach out for me to be a well-rounded boxer because and and even going into the hamadouche fight like we didn't just start training that way for hamadouche when I turned pro, Coach Al said, there's going to be a girl that's going to close that space and get you on the inside. We already know that you can box on the outside. I have to get you going to the body. I have to get you comfortable on the inside. He's been working for me on that, with me on that for the last four or five years as a pro. And you've seen it in little spurts of my fights coming up. People are like, why is she using her height and reach? Why is she banging the body? Because I was practicing. I was practicing. I already know how to box. I already knew how to use my jab and throw one, two from the outside. I was practicing getting ready and prepared for someone like Hamadouche. And I'm seeing that now. That's what Coach Al was doing. Like he, and then we went up against Hamadouche, and all those years of like him working that left to the body. In this fight, we're gonna work that right to the body. In this fight, we're gonna work the bump of the shoulder and holding your ground and shifting your head. And all those little things that he's been working on, it all had to come together in this fight, in that fight, and it did. So, um, but it doesn't mean that I forgot how to box. That I don't know how. It's just him making me a well-rounded fighter and preparing me for moments like that. Now, when, whenever we talk last couple fights, the big fight we'll get into at some point is you moving up and fighting Katie Taylor. But now, do you feel like Bumgarner, there's a super fight in your own division now before you have to move up? There's a super fight, yeah. But I don't, it's, I, I tried to get it. I tried to get it for this fight. Um, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen as soon as I, I want it to happen. Why um, do you this, Michaela? Well, Eddie Hearn has Baumgartner and Choi, and he's reserving them for each other. He told us. They're for each other. Um, uh, and I get it. He has, as a promoter, coming from a promoter, of course he wants to reserve them for each other. And then, you know, he, the ball's in his, a little more in his court when we have an undisputed fight. It's a little more even, right? Um, right now, uh, Baumgartner has a mandatory in Elham McCollid that just came up, and apparently they're fighting in June-ish. And then you know, a fight with Choi at the end of the year. So what, where does that leave me at next, a year from now fighting for undisputed at one thirty? So as much as I want to get that done, I've been very vocal about it. I've been the one hunting it for that from the beginning. Like it's been me. So, but I'm not going to sit around and wait. Like I'm going to still look at my other options. And if, if I get an opportunity to go up and fight the winner of Serrano versus Taylor, which is what I would love to do. I'm absolutely going to take that. I'm not going to sit around and wait for anybody. Um, there's so many more fights for me at 35 and 40. So I'm really, really hoping that we can get this undisputed fight happening, but it should happen this year. There's no reason why it shouldn't happen this year. If we have to wait until next year, then like, I have to take the biggest fights I can get elsewhere. I, I would love this. It just makes too much sense for you two to square off. And then the winners of Taylor Serrano and Mayor Bumgarner, you know, fate, that, that would just be too beautiful. <laughs> yeah, well, we got Fight's happening. Choi's impossible to freaking get a fight with. She's impossible to work with. She's horrible. I hate her. She's horrible for this sport. Her team sucks. Um, Eddie's got to deal with her, though, and he wants to give her that fight to, to Baumgartner first. So we just got to wait it out. Just know it's not on me. I want the fight. Top rank knows I want the fight. They've tried to get the fight, um, but this is just the business of boxing. So um, I don't know how soon that fight's going to happen, but I'm not going to wait around for it. I'm going to take the opportunities that come my way. Just to close on on uh, the Bumgardner situation, um, like her power and athleticism would, would appear to be, you know, very formidable. But then at the same time, um, she has fit, her 12 combined opponents have won 56 fights and your last three opponents have won 65 fights. So yeah, um, the difference in, yeah, what, 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 yeah, with the bad blood and everything, how would that fight go? Bumgardner caught terry harper yes she did good job she's proven to have power but she has not been tested yet she has not she's 
her quality of opponents are very low. And so I, I'm not sold on Baumgartner yet. I think that she does a few things very well, but I am definitely the more well-rounded, versatile boxer. I can do way more than her. And I'm on a different level than her. Um, you know, she turned pro the same time as me, but where was she the years before that? Where was she the amateur on the national level of the amateur tournaments? I mean, she wasn't she wasn't anywhere to be seen. Um, she was just coasting through her career. Uh, I've been working, I've been hustling, I've been growing, developing, and she's not on my level. And also, the Taylor Serrano, who wins that fight and why, Michaela? So I um, I think that they both have two very very different styles. Taylor still believes she's a very amateur style, and it's worked very well for her. She's very good at that amateur style. It's not a, not a, it's not a dig. Um, Serrano comes from a totally different background, being a pro, very sound pro style. She never really competed in the amateurs. So two very, two very different styles. Um, Katie Taylor, fast hands, high punch count, and she's proven to get to use that amateur style and make it work for a whole 10 rounds. Um, I think that she'll win the first half of the fight because that's usually what a good amateur can, can beat a sound pro for the first half or first few rounds. It's just usually what they are. It throws the, the, the amateur style with the fast hands and high punch count will throw off a pro for the first half, right? And then the pro kind of gets settled and, and able to close that space, which I think Amanda Serrano is going to do well also. So I see her taking sort of the second half of the fight. But I do think it's going to go decision. I don't know who's going to take that decision. It's really just who shows up that day, who has a better game plan, who fights harder and uh, has uh, – Oh, and so just, stays, <laughs> just stays more disciplined throughout those 10 rounds. I so don't know who it's going to be. With, with that, so with that said about your assessment of their styles, was it smart for Katie Taylor to turn down the three-minute 12 rounds? Because like you said, the amateur style, get off to that lead. And did it favor her more to stick with the 10 rounds in two minutes? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think it did favor her. Um, she would have, I've always said, I don't know why Katie Taylor hasn't really made that transition to the pros. I, I mean, it's her coaching, right? Um, it's worked for her so well for so many years, uh, but she really hasn't settled down her feet and she doesn't really like punch her combinations behind her jab, leads a lot with her backhand, very in and out movement, which is very amateur. Um, she's made it work for her, but if she were to settle down, she she would be more suited to go those 12 three minute rounds, but she's not, it would be how that style for 12, three minute rounds would be very exhausting. And, it, would and like, oh, sorry, well. it would definitely favor Serrano. So Serrano is a lot more settled and the body puncher, right? So the, and the body punching. Yeah. Um, and then uh, just before I let you get out of here, I know there's a lot of people who want to talk to you champ um, to just uh, quick predictions on um, and, and quick assessment on Spence Ugas and your teammate Shakur Stevenson against Oscar Valdez, please. Um, I, I've always been a huge Errol Spence fan. Um, love his body work. Um, so I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for him against Ugas. Uh, Ugas has proven to be pretty competitive lately. So, uh, I don't really exactly know how that will go, but I, I'm, I am rooting for, for Spence. Um, I have more of an opinion on Oscar Valdez versus Shakur Stevenson. Uh, definitely rooting for Shakur Stevenson there. And it has nothing to do with the fact that he's my teammate and friend, like, Shakur Stevenson is a special boxer. Um, he may not, people who know boxing know that, but maybe the world hasn't really seen it yet. He hasn't had a chance to really prove it yet, but he is amazing. He's an amazing talent. Like he's very, very, very highly skilled. His boxing IQ is, is incomparable, like the best out there. So, and I know this, I've sparred with him. I've seen him work. Like he's, he's really, really, really is a prodigy. And I just don't see him. I just don't see someone with a – I don't see anyone beating him. But I don't see Valdez – I mean, Valdez's style is – he's very one-dimensional. You know, he, he comes forward and he bangs and he's strong and he's gritty, but I just don't think that he has the skills to beat to beat score. Thank you so much, Michaela. April 9th, live on ESPN, headlining against Jennifer Hahn. Thank you so much, Michaela. Always, always awesome to catch up with you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Talk soon. Take care, champ. Thanks, Evan.